Welcome everybody to our third episode of a new series called You Know Nothing, where we cover the latest news, strategies, and covering new units around the Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. I am the Brick, as you all know, and today I have Jay with me, somewhere on the screen. Hello, Jay. <laughs> Hello, Jay. So as a brief introduction to yourself, Jay, tell us more about yourself and the community you have in the Philippines. Right. So definitely it's a burgeoning Civ community here, but there has been a long history of wargaming in the Philippines. I myself am a 20-year-plus, we now 24-year wargamer, uh, wow. both competitively and, uh, and uh, casually. I've joined a number of tournaments in all these systems, but um, the Civ uh, community here is really young. It's a year old. It's, it actually started really growing when um, Vince came over a year ago, or not even a year ago. We have a strong burgeoning community, very creative community. And while I play more than 100, I think, miniature wargaming systems, Tiff is firmly and always will be part of my top three. So sure, that's good. But just, just, for, just, just to ask you some other questions, how many players mm -hmm. you have in the Philippines so that our audience can understand? Yeah, so right now, when Vince came over, we were, we were eight. There were eight of us, I think. And now we're, um, we've broken 30. I think we're closing in on 40. Hopefully, more of those players will join our tournaments. But some, it's a good mix of casual, um, regular casual players and tournament players as well. Sure, sure. I was looking forward to come down to the Philippines soon to start uh, training you guys for Thailand in Realms of Battle this year. Yeah, so looking probably forward to it. July, August. <laughs> All right, let's have so more let's... ramen. Let's have more ramen here. Sure, yeah, yeah, we'll have more ramen. So, yeah, I love the ramen in the Philippines. It's very good for <laughs> our audience to realize. Yeah. All right, sure. Uh, let's start to move on to our star discussion about the video for today the Stone Crows. We want to analyze these units. So, let's take a look at the Stone Crows. All right. So, as you all know, today we're looking at the Stone Crows. They are a new five point unit. And we know that in every faction, or at least a majority of factions, the five point slot is kind of contested at this point. There are many, many good choices. And on paper, when you look at the Stone Crow, it doesn't look like it will outbeat any of your other five point units. But I'm here to hear I'm here today to tell you guys where it can shine in very awkward situations that you didn't really think about, but has potential. And that's for you to try. Alright, so let's look at the Stone Crows. Uh it has insight. Uh so insight on paper, yeah, you know. Getting highest attack dies, getting vicious is nice. Uh, recruiting from the heal is great because it's an ability that allows you to heal. Unlike your other five-point units, which is quite rare to see a healing effect in a five-point unit. Uh, but the key thing to take note is when recruiting with recruiting from the heal, you can couple that with effects like go down fighting, and then you can heal back up, and then it goes down fighting again to deal additional wounds. So it's something to think about, and something that some of the attachments today you'll see has goes go down fighting. Uh, so yeah, on, and the other thing, take note, it has one downside. It has disorganized. Disorganized is, a, is an effect that we see in free folk raiders, and it's coming to this unit as well. Uh, on paper, again, it looks bad, but again, there's a lot of units or sorry, a lot of attachments with iron resolve nowadays that can help negate this uh, downside. Okay, so Jay, what do you think about the Stone Crows? Yeah, it's a very interesting unit. I think it's a shoe in in Lannisters. It's it's a good choice um, as a five point unit. But more than that, I think it's very creative. It allows you a lot of creativity, um, especially because it's a neutral unit, which means it competes to fill a space in your faction as a neutral unit. And if you're talking about five point neutrals, you have Lysine cell swords, cutthroats, and mercenaries, right? So. Um, the two, the first two are actually very aggressive units. Now that you have a four plus toolbox in the mercenary, um, Stormchrome mercenary unit, but this is unique as it offers resilience in a different way, right? You lose yeah. people, you gain people. So yeah. it has four plus save, which is not so bad uh, for a five point unit as well. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So as you alluded a little bit to what's uh Lannister does get another version of this unit where they can bring the the Tyrion Lannister, the one point Tyrion one point Tyrion Lannister attachment uh with battle plan and counter strategy in counter strategy in. So that's another good benefit of getting the Stone Crows. But for today, we are gonna start analyzing at the attachments that are not working in Lannisters that we think other factions can benefit from. So let's take a look at the attachments uh, I have identified today to spice up this unit. 
All right, so as you can see uh, on the screen, uh, there are three attachments that I've identified, which are a little bit weird, but let me cover them. Uh, obviously, I've described previously, Iron Resolve works well. So Stack Knight Global has Iron Resolve, and it also has go down fighting. So what does that do? You can play a very tanky list, like with maybe uh, Renly. Renly, that has a lot of healing, where you can keep healing them and using them as a stone wall. Likewise, for Great Joy's Drown Prophet, go down fighting and resilience. The whole idea about them is turning the Stone Crow into a stone wall. <laughs> and you have Boltons with Grunt. Yeah, so the whole point is they can be a decent objective sitter in that sense. Uh, and they can help you uh, stonewall, like maybe the middle objective, so that your other units can start flanking and doing other shenanigans. Uh, what do you think, Jay? Yeah, I agree. Iron Resolve is definitely the ability to take, right? To mitigate that disorganized downside to it, right? Um, that and, and healing from anywhere, right? So things like heals when you pass morale or heal effects from other sources would be great in this unit. Yep. So yeah, these are the effects that I have identified. Uh, maybe Jay will show you more later on. I think he, some of the lists that he's sharing today have something similar with what uh, we just said. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the potential commanders you can spice up this unit with. Uh, all right, so the first one, uh, you guys are going to be surprised. It's a very popular commander from yesteryear's Harman Ula. So it's a bit of an odd pick, right? Harman Ula was always positioned as like the commander where you use better endurance and stuff. But the reason I picked Harman Ula is actually because of Spiteful Truth and his own ability. If you put Harman Ula in the Stone Crows, they will heal potentially two to five wounds because reinforcement can stack with recruiting from the heal. So you can, I think, your heal two by default. If you control crown, you'll heal one more. For each rank destroyed, you'll heal one more. So I think the maximum they can heal is five. So you can use them as a stone wall, and then your other units can go and bully like your storm crow, not storm crow, your skirmishers, your Martel skirmishers, and your star four knights can go and bully at the side. So this is one idea I had. Uh, yeah, and you also have spiteful truth. So if they pass morale, you can heal them again. So there's a lot of healing in this list, and don't forget, Martel also has access to plenty of weakened tokens, so you can probably keep them alive for a very very long time. And if I recall one more thing. Harman Ula does have Iron Resolve as well. So, hey, you see, you're starting to see my train of thoughts of how to keep this unit alive. <laughs> so, yeah. Jay, what do you think? Yeah, Harman Ula is one of my favorite um, Martel commanders. I used him, I think, in the last tournament I played with Martels, um, where I lost one game, my only game. But, but he's a fun commander to use. That heal definitely is boosted by his ability. And then you have other... Um, uh, cards, uh, tactic cards that you can capitalize on. For example, as you mentioned, battle endurance on a ramping unit, right? If you have a unit that remains in play for a long time, battle endurance is, is a, a great card to have. And things like uh, Roynish Vengeance and Unbent, Unbroken, Unbowed, right? These mitigate the... Um, well, Unbent, Unbroken mitigates the morale some, right? If you're failing that morale, you need to Reroll yep, that does, morale check. And then okay. also, um, uh, Royanist Vengeance is actually providing you that um, that ping, that one point uh, damage that you might need in the later games. Fair, fair. Yeah. Okay, so we'll talk more about Harmon Ulu later because that's one of the lists I have built. Yeah, so stuff. all these <laughs> points that Jay has brought up will be relevant to be discussed again later. Now, next up, let's look at my next interesting pick. Uh, you wouldn't expect it, but it's actually Marcellin. So, those that played with me in Asia would know that I love to build hot lists. And you can see there is a lot of Freakman in... Uh, yeah, you can see that Marcellin has access to Freakman because he has Devotee of the Dragon. And part of what I like to do is make a hot list with Stone Crow because Stone Crow, again, can be a very good anchor for the rest of your army uh, in a hot list to go and bully... Uh, bully the enemy so yeah and don't forget if you can combine with Freakman Stone Crow will hit on 3 plus with 7 dice so it's not as bad as you think so but before we talk about Marcellin I think we will skip it because Marcellin is the second list I have built for today and we'll discuss later so let's move on to our third commander the third commander is actually a surprise pick also it's a bit quirky it's actually for neutrals it's joking 
So Jokin is the third pick for obvious reason because in the neutral deck, Jokin has a total of technically four auto pass morale. Auto pass panic? I think it's auto pass panic. But four auto pass morale slash panic cards. And Stone Crow's key problem is they have seven plus morale. Seven plus morale is very detrimental in a faction where you don't have a lot of. Um, I quite, you don't have a lot of uh, morale defense uh, normally, like Iron Resolve. So that's something I thought about. Uh, yeah, so that's another possibility uh, to negate. Uh, Jay, what do you think? Yeah, both are excellent choices. Excited to discuss that, Marceline. Actually, that list that you you sent over it, it's very oh, okay. interesting. Yeah, I was I was actually fielding a slave trade, what I call a slave trade list prior to Stone Crow, but um. Your ideas on maximizing that with Stone Crew are very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, now I think you are eager to talk about it. So we're going to go to the next segment, also known as the list sharing segment. So let's move on to the next segment. Okay. In this segment, we normally explore like, you know, different lists um, to showcase the units. But instead of three, which we normally do in the past episode, we'll be doing four today, just so that we can show how the different factions can cover and use Stone Crows. Aside from Lannister, because we know everyone, everyone knows Lannister can use it. So first up, it's my first list, and Jay brought it up already. It's the Marcellan list. So as you can see, what's going on in that list? Uh, I built this list because part of my personal journey as an SI player is to explore the unexplored, and one of the unexplored area in season four is what I call the Raid Area Fifty One list. In season two, I enjoyed like a seven combat unit, two NCU list. In this version, I have a six combat unit, three NCU list with Pia Pri. Uh, I'm more on that later. Okay, and the goal of this list is to overwhelm your opponent with an uh, insane amount of units. As you can see in my list, I believe there is. I start with two Freedmen, but in total, I should be able to hit five Freedmen. How so? Because I have Miss Sunday. So my Miss Sunday will spawn the first Freedmen if I take Swords. Then I will use Pia Pri to go on Undying to take back the card, the Devotee of the Dragon. So to start on next round, if he doesn't take Swords, I'll spawn the second Freedmen. And then hopefully I draw the other devotee of the dragon to spawn the, the third freedman. So in total I have five freedmen. But the whole idea is to just overwhelm your opponent. And I also have brazen beasts. Uh, I think two brazen beasts, if I recall. Yeah. And the two brazen beasts job is to use Sentinel to abuse and uh, play the positioning game and charge block. Because as you all know, charge block is an important mechanic. Uh, maybe we'll do a video on charge block in the future. Yeah. And part of the list is also with Sandor and Aya. Why Sendong and Aya? Because Aya is going to be very, very pesky if she has Sentinel and she can go out and kill all those annoying attachments. So that is roughly my list. Uh, what do you think, Jay? Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, again, I, I was running a list without Stone Crows that worked similarly. I think the strength of a slave list or a freedman list, sorry, uh, would be the blocking of charges and forcing him to kill, right? Then you're yeah. priming, um, yeah, when when he kills, you prime Marceline, you're priming um, Aya. That Blood of the Dragon, Arya is primed as well, right? Yeah. So all these things contribute to building up your um, more elite units. You're actually transforming your Stone Crow here with an additional Marceline plus one, an additional... Uh, additional stats as well from Blood of the Dragon, right? Things like that. And um, definitely the recursion using uh, first turn or second turn at that um, uh, Devotees of the Dragon with uh, with Missande and then recurring that card with uh, with Piatri is, is, is the way to go. At a certain point, he will need to kill one of your slaves even if he doesn't want to. And I think yep. one of the strengths would be Supply Aid. If he stops doing that, right, you can supply aid um, your your freedmen to heal up your resources when you're in the pitch. Yep, that's fair. The other thing to consider is one of my favorite things in the game is using devastating impact with freedmen mm -hmm. because it's just like <laughs> a small little guy coming in and giving you two tokens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love devastating impact because it's just such a good value cut. But all you need to do is charge. And But the problem with charging is sometimes when you play the traditional four combat unit three NCU list, you don't have a lot to charge with over time. Like if you draw your devastating impact leg, the card becomes hard to play because you're already locked and engaged. But with yeah. that, with that many combat units, you have a lot of opportunities to use devastating impact to, to generate that two tokens that you need. 
Yeah, and, and you're tying them up, right? So if the freed yeah. man is right in front of them, what will they do? They kill it? You prime your death prime? Um, uh, you set up your Marcellan, you set up your Aya, mm -hmm. and potentially Blood of the Dragon. And Blood of the Dragon is a card that works with Stone Crow. <laughs> yeah, and you turn one of their activations, just either retreating or getting rid of that freed man. Right? So, yeah, devastating impact, impact. I see it. I see it. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, this is the first list that we covered. Now let's move on to our next list. Uh, this is my second list, as I discussed, as I said previously, it's a Harman Ula list. So let's take a look at my next creation, Harman Ula. All right, as you know, I said I put Harman Ula in Stone Crow because the amount of healing is great to hold objective, uh, but its job is to just hold that objective. Let's say the middle objective or the whole key points. My real damage dealer, obviously the Sand Skirmisher with Spear Lord because that is such an obnoxious combo. <clears throat> and a Star Fall Knight for mobility as well as Lens. Uh, I have a Dune Viper with Sandor and I have Shea and I have Ilaria. If you notice, there's a common thing between these three. It's the weakened token. Because part of this list strength is to play what Mattel is good at, which is controlling the aggression of the opponent. And yeah, that's why I have. I'm throwing out a lot of weakened tokens at my enemy. Uh, Ares Oha is for obvious reason, which is to stay on sword so they can synergize with Ilaria. Yeah. So, yeah, Jay, how do you think yeah. about this list? Ultra Heal, definitely. I see it. It's to take the... You can you can do Harman taking the central objective and sitting on it, um, just healing itself. Of course, you still need to be careful about nukes, right? So, high damage dealing units like Knights of the... of Casterly Rock, for example, charging you. Be careful about those things. But apart from that, so long as they survive to activate another day, you're probably going to heal up, right? To, yep. to full strength or, or at least to three ranks. And yep. um, whatever resources they dedicate to removing your central Harman unit, right, is um, means there's less resources dealing with your actual killers. That's fair. That's a fair point. But I think one thing great about a Martel list is Martels don't have to be aggressive. They can spend a lot of time setting up their place with all their tactics cut and then making the position the opponent make a mistake and have bad positioning so that they can capitalize on the bad positioning and punish their opponent so your stone crow is just that stone wall to make your opponent oopsie uh yeah. get into a bad position yep yep and hold them there right hold them yeah, there uh the dune viper can do something similar so yay yeah okay so with this list covered now let's go on to jay's first list i believe he built a uh, readily charismatic heal list. So let's take a look yeah. at that. Right. So this is coming out of our conversation about Rose Knights and about um, defensive units with stat for uh, movement, right? So you remember we had that conversation on your visit, Josh, and it got me to thinking about doing a core cent center objective setting unit with uh, movement five, but does the same thing as a Rose Knight. And I was thinking that while Rose Knights um, heal on their attack at the start of their attack, these guys heal on their activate, even if they're not connected to any other unit. But putting Loras 1, uh, the Loras that doesn't have Duelist, into this um, into this unit gives them Deadly Bloom, yep. which means that every time they activate, if they're connected to a unit, they will actually poke one wound out of that unit, right? Uh, and then, I don't think it's only activate as, as, as long as they heal. Yes, as long as they heal. But I, I mean, yeah. because of the recruitment from the hills, yeah. that's already one source of a ping, of a yeah. wound. Then you have other sources like Marjorie. Yeah. You have um, heals from, from other sources as well. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Yes. And then Renly having that, um, what do you call that inspiration thing, where he has plus one morale to everything in short range partially mitigates your low morale so yep. not so much but it, it gives you plus one morale which makes you survivable um and uh, just for fun uh, i put in two stone crow units here instead of one so i'm using my my uh, neutrals allocation to field two stone crow units one has um uh as i mentioned one has loras with dead, deadly bloom the other has emon with vengeance of the crown which now punishes units for making you lose ranks which yep. you will eventually heal up definitely you're competing for crown anyway uh being being um 
being Baratheon, right? So you're competing for crown, and this gives you that extra damage that um, will deter him from doing an all-out attack on you. So we're mitigating the low morale with partially with um, with the commander. We're providing deadly bloom so that it's a five movement, typically a five movement um, uh, rose knight unit with four plus save, and and weaker stats. But then you have one more card from from Renly, which is younger, bolder, far more calm, calmly. If you can prime that on one or both of your stone pro units, you get an attack bonus, um, and you heal an extra wound on on activation. So you're healing two plus your uh, missing ranks on activation. It's not as good as Harman Uller's unit would heal, but it's, I think, good enough to keep you in the game for a long time, thereby uh, maximizing the strategy of typical Randy units of maximum heal, etc. And then just as an added way to pull out that uh, younger, bolder, more comely card, um, I put in Eldon um, for card draw. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm just surprised you decided to do two Stone Crows in this list. Yeah, it's, it, it, it would be fun. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to win tournaments, right? But I yeah. would, I actually would feel that. Sure, just to see sure. How it goes. Yeah. No issue. Maybe uh, in the, on a three, on a three Renly list. Uh, a three Renly format. Tournament. Right, we, we did do a three Renly tournament. Uh, yeah. bonus before <laughs> all right so let's move on to the final list of the day and i believe it's a great john umber list so let's take a look at great john umber so jay tell us more about your final list or your second so this one um attempts to make what can be viewed as a bug which is their their weak stats um and tries to channel it as a feature right we want to punish them for making us lose units and ranks. So Berzer, uh, Umbers are really good at doing that. Great John has Slash Out, which allows you to um, deal unavoidable damage to your opponents when they attack you uh, based on the number of ranks that you've lost, which in theory you'll heal up anyway, so you can keep doing that. And that's why Sansa is there to, to do some recursive shenanigans with um, with lash out berserker tactics will also work okay and um if you do lose them then you have a final strike that that that, that you can capitalize on but uh, it's really lash out last time last time last time last time there you go yeah. um but um it really uh tries to maximize the use of lash out now um i also put in mage there because in the same line that you um, were discussing at the start of this podcast, right? She gives um, Iron Resolve, and she also gives Go Down Fighting to that unit. So you're getting damage. It's actually going to be scary if you get damage for uh, a bunch of wounds, and then you do lash out. Go Down Fighting also triggers. Yeah, it, because it that can potentially damage. be six wounds at one shot. <laughs> Six wounds at one shot. So uh, a rank unit would should probably hesitate in attacking you, right? So things yeah, like that. yeah, that's pretty good because that punishes a lot of solo units. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. Like imagine, like you just oh, I lashed out and then I have to go down fighting. So Mac the Mighty takes six wounds. Mac the Mighty just dies. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's, that's, that's true. interesting. I never think about it that way because Mac the Mighty is like example. Mac the Mighty. Okay, it's probably mm -hmm. one of the better choices uh, to deal to destroy two ranks. Yes. Because you'll probably deal six out of seven, you feel panic and I'll do more. So yeah. yeah, like and then you lash him out and just like just tell him like no bro, your Magna Mighty is there. He deals he just eats six. Yeah. And <laughs> I if, mean you probably it... lose your stone crow because Magna Mighty has a last ten as well. But yeah, I mean yeah, it's a it's a good trade off. <laughs> it's a good trade off. I mean five points with a two point attachment. So that's still seven. It's still yeah, an investment, yeah. but if you can yeah. At least do that twice in a game. I think you're you're good, right? If you are able to lash out, heal yeah, back yeah. up, then lash out again. I think you're yeah. good. You've won back. Yeah, that's a very interesting combo. I didn't consider when I look at your list. Mm. Uh, it's very nasty. Yeah. So it's that <laughs> then, age, yeah, go down fighting and lash out combo that, that well, is that's, actually scary. Yeah, that's potent. That is very potent. All right. So I like this list. I'm actually considering this combo now. I uh, didn't really think about it until now. It's so strong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, so with that said, uh, let's head to our closing segment for today. Uh, we have now identified and released. Okay, so Jay, do you have any final words about how you think Stone Coast will perform? I think it's not for the um, weak of heart. <laughs> Let me put it that way. It's a creative choice. Um, it competes well, in my opinion, as a creative choice against all the other five-point neutral units. Um, depending on how you build your list, it has its space, in my opinion. There's no one... Uh, like, you know, Lysine Cell Source does its own thing. This also does its own thing. And if you're willing to be creative, I think you can find more interesting combos that even you and I did not think, think about yet, right? So yeah. it's it to me, I'm excited about it because it opens up the design space um, so much as you list build. But in terms yep. of whether it's overpowered, definitely it's not. Yeah. Um, Again, it's for people who want to explore, and that's like right up my alley. Yeah, I think that's the charm of SIF, like Songwise and Fire, the miniature game. I think for a lot of us that have been playing for a while, like these are the things that we want from the game because they allow us to make more silly but janky combos that uh, mm -hmm. makes uh, playing in a 40 points format at an event scene interesting because then, example, the Mage Mobile combo with uh, the Stone Crows, a lot of people will get, will get caught off guard when you lashed out. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And hopefully now they won't because they watch this podcast. So uh, <laughs> that's good. That's, good. Uh, that's a good thing if people watch the video. So we want more <laughs> people to watch our video. So uh, that's a good way to segment to our uh, closure. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, please share with your friends as well because we want to get our viewership up so that more people can know about the nonsense we do in Asia. Uh, so with that all said done, uh, thank you. And we would like to see you next time on You Know Nothing. <laughs>